Hey everybody, Coke Noke here, and today we're going to discuss Nick Cannon. So by now, a lot of people are familiar with this story, Nick Cannon on his podcast with a guest said some very anti-white and anti-Semitic stuff. His guest was Richard Griffin, also known as Professor Griff, who left rap group Public Enemy after telling the Washington Times in 1989, the Jews are wicked and we can prove this. So in terms of what he said on the podcast, Nick said, when we talk about the power of melanated people, when we talk about who we are as gods and understanding that melanin is so powerful and it connects us in a way, the reason why they fear black the reason why they fear us is the lack that they have of it. When you see what Dr. Francis C. Welsing talked about, is that fear and that deficiency when you see a person that has the lack of pigment, the lack of melanin, that they know that they will be annihilated. So therefore, however, they got the power. They have the lack of compassion. Melanin comes with compassion. Melanin comes with soul. We call it soul. We call ourselves soul brothers and sisters. So the people that don't have it are, and I'm, I must say this carefully a little less. And where the term co actually comes from, and I'm bringing it all the way back around to Minister Farrakhan, to where they might not have the compassion, when they were sent to the mountains of Caucasus, when they didn't have the power of the sun, when the sun started to deteriorate them, then they're acting out of fear. They're acting out of low self-esteem. They're acting out of a deficiency. So therefore, the only way that they can act is evil. They have to rob, steal, rape in order to survive. So when we, and when I say me, I mean the melanated people, they had to be savages. They had to be barbaric because they're in those Nordic mountains. They're in these rough torrential environments. They're eating as animals. So they're the ones that are acting closer to animals. They're the ones that are actually the true savages. They built up, I won't say warrior, but they built up this conquering barbaric mentality. And with this statement, he is basically calling white people savages and with that particular quote he was talking about hebrews and whites and jewish people i believe he also said something along the lines of how black people can't be anti-semitic because they are the true jews something along those lines i don't have the exact quote he then released a statement basically saying, anybody who knows me that I have no hate in my heart nor malice intentions. I do not condone hate speech nor spread the hateful rhetoric. We are living in a time when it is more important than ever to promote unity and understanding. Okay, but you, you just basically called an entire race of people subhuman. So... The, the, there's a contradiction right there. He also refused to apologize, and he also said he would welcome a few rabbis on his podcast. But yeah, he basically issued a half-assed, like not even an apology. And of course, this resulted in Viacom CBS firing him over those remarks and their statement was Viacom CBS condemns bigotry of any kind and we categorically denounce all forms of anti-semitism okay but I guess you don't condemn racism against white people since you didn't mention that they continue to say quote while we support ongoing education and dialogue in the fight against bigotry we are deeply troubled that Nick has failed to acknowledge or apologize for perpetuating anti-Semitism, and we are terminating our relationship with him, unquote. See, this is one of the issues I have with this whole story, is that 
people and the news media in general, they're focusing mainly on the anti-Semitic stuff that he said. And when Nick eventually issued an apology, it was basically just to Jewish people. He said, first and foremost, I extend my deepest and most sincere apologies to my Jewish sisters and brothers for the hurtful and divisive words that came out of my mouth during my interview with Richard Griffin. They reinforce the worst stereotypes, blah, 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 blah. He also said the video of the interview has been removed. Again, nothing about the racism towards white people. And you don't hear it from the mainstream news media as well, which I think encourages unchecked racism against white people. We have this idea in our society, particularly in the States, that it's somehow okay to be racist towards white people because they are theoretically and allegedly the most uh, privileged race in this country. But in my opinion, I think there's privilege that comes with every race, if you ask me. He also got his job back at The Masked Singer, which I believe premieres on Fox Network. And I guarantee you, if a white person said that about black people and or Jewish people, they would not be getting job offers. They would not even stand a chance to gain their job back, in my opinion. And continuing on with the anti-white rhetoric, I really wish that Caucasians in general would stop being racist towards their own kind. It doesn't help. I don't know why people do it, but what it ends up doing is it creates this environment that encourages racism, unchecked racism towards Caucasians from other races. And by Caucasians, I mean white people, but everyone says white people, and then they love to insert a racist statement after that, especially Caucasians themselves. So that's why I prefer to use the word Caucasian, even though that might technically be the ethnicity term and not the race, but you get what I mean by that. So, and by the way, I am half white. So I do take a little bit of offense when someone is just openly racist towards Caucasians. Again, I have no idea why they do it. But what happens is that it gives other races this idea of, oh, well, we can be racist towards the whites because they're being racist towards themselves. Look, just because Caucasians in America tend to be the most privileged does not make it okay to be racist towards them. And just because black people have been the most historically oppressed in this country does not make it acceptable for them to be racist towards white people or any other race. I'm really sick of this idea that, one, black privilege doesn't exist because this is a clear case of it existing, him getting his job back. Do you think that would happen with a white person if they said something bad about another race? Absolutely not. Now, in terms of him getting fired, should he have been fired? I, I don't know. I don't know because my problem with firing someone over racist remarks or any sexist, anti-Semite, you name it, it's not really going to change their line of thinking, at least in my opinion. It doesn't really solve the problem. All it is is mainly corporations and companies cutting ties with somebody for public relations purposes. That, that's at least how I see it. So the biggest problem I have with this is people are not focusing on the fact that he also included white people in that statement I just read. And people also seem to be perpetuating the idea that black people cannot be racist. Uh, if you want proof that that is completely not true, look at the tweets 
around Nick Cannon's tweets, around the whole subject, that should be evidence alone that black people can actually be racist, just like any other race. Just because your race was historically oppressed in a certain country doesn't make them immune from being racist, all right? I think we also use history as a way to give people free passes to be racist or vice versa. That's at least what I've observed. Anyway, that's all I got on this. This is Coke Nook signing off. Thanks for watching.